Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and I've got a great video for you today because we are going to be checking out two brand new Ryzen 7000 series CPUs, the Ryzen 7 7700 and the Ryzen 9 7900. So these CPUs offering very, very similar specifications to their X series counterparts, but with much, much lower power consumption and slightly cooler thermals as well, which I know you guys are probably interested in. So we will be comparing these CPUs against their X-Series counterparts, all the other Ryzen 7000 series CPUs, as well as a whole bunch of Ryzen 5000 series CPUs and Intel's competition, uh, including the 13th gen and 12th gen CPUs, so you can work out which ones you should buy. Should you go for the X-Series versions of these CPUs? Should you go for other 7000 series CPUs? Or should you go for something from Intel instead? So hopefully we'll be able to come to some conclusions at the end of the video. First though, a word from our sponsor. Our sponsor today is scdkey.com, where right now you can get some great deals on software such as Windows 10, Windows 11, and Microsoft Office. Even better news is that I have a discount code to share with you guys that will get you even more money off this software. So Microsoft Windows 10 Pro, for example, which is fully upgradable for free to Windows 11 if you want to do that. All you have to do is click buy now, enter the code CRT25 into the promotion code box, click apply and the UK price, for example, will drop from £17 all the way down to just £12.76 and you'll see similar discounts elsewhere in other currencies as well. Once purchased, you'll want to head to your order page and copy the Windows 10 Pro key shown at the bottom of the page. When you're in Windows, you want to move your mouse over to the start button, right click, go to settings, then update and security, and then move up to activation and Finally, click on change your product key, copy and paste your brand new product key into the box, click next, then click activate, and your Windows 10 installation is now activated. Finally, you can do exactly the same thing with Office 2021 Professional by clicking the buy button using code CR25 again, click apply, and you'll get a hefty discount on Office as well. Thanks again to SCD Key for sponsoring this video, and you can see a whole bunch more links and discounts in the description below. So in terms of specifications then, starting with the Ryzen 9 7900, it has the same Zen 4 architecture, it's five nanometers, it has 12 cores and 24 threads, 12 megabyte L2 cache and 64 megabyte L3 cache compared to the Ryzen 9 7900X. So all of that is exactly the same. Where it differs is in TDP and frequency. So the 7900 has a TDP of just 65 watts compared to 170 watts for the 7900X. And that basically results in some frequency climb down. So there is a drop from 5.6 to 5.4 gigahertz. And if you're interested in the all-core boost, the 4.3 gigahertz all-core boost I saw with the 7900 was 1000 megahertz lower than the 5.3 gigahertz I saw with the 7900X. So that is primarily where the drop in performance is gonna come. That is where the power savings are coming from. The benefit though is that you see a processor temperature with custom liquid cooling of around 60 degrees and it won't go much above that with a decent air cooler. So you will be seeing significantly lower temperatures, significantly lower power consumption and also a much, much lower all-core boost, which could result in significantly lower multi-threaded performance, but we will get onto that later. The Ryzen 7 7700, though, has, again, Zen 4 architecture, 5 nanometers. It has the same 8 cores and 16 threads as the 7700X. We are also dealing with uh, 8 megabytes of L2 cache and 32 megabytes of L3 cache, but again, the TDP is limited to 65 watts. Now, that's not as much of a climb down because the 7700X only had a TDP of 105 watts, so you're only saving 40 watts there compared to over 100 watts with the 7900. So what I saw in benchmarking was an all-core boost with the 7700 of 4.7 gigahertz. That was the most consistent frequency that I saw when all, uh, all eight cores were under load. With the with the 7700X, that was 5.2 gigahertz. So you're only losing around 500 megahertz here on the all-core boost, um, whereas the single-core boost obviously sticking relatively similarly um, at 
5.4 gigahertz to 5.3 gigahertz. So just 100 megahertz climb down on the single core boost um, or peak core boost, should I say, whereas the all core boost has climbed down by 500 megahertz. Now, obviously you can overclock these processors. You can do a manual overclock. Um, unfortunately, I didn't see much benefit from doing that because basically you have to increase the V-core to such an amount to maintain a similar frequency to the peak boost uh, of both of these CPUs that the, pro the processor basically gets too hot. You're having to pump well over 1.2 volts through the CPU, sometimes significantly more than that, to maintain those frequencies um, and to not really climb down from that single core boost, that, which, is not, which is basically what you don't want to do. If you want to just boost multi-threaded performance, sure, a, a, a manual overclock is a pretty good way of doing that. But if you want to, if you don't want to lose any lightly threaded performance, then you don't really want to do a manual overclock with either either of these CPUs. What you want to do is use Precision Boost Overdrive, AMD's automatic overclocking tool, which is available in Ryzen Master and probably your motherboard's BIOS as well, and probably play with Curve Optimizer. So even if you just play with automatic overclocking and PBO you will see a significant uptick in terms of the all-core boost. So the 7900, for example, that 4.3 all-core boost at stock speed, which is pretty low, that increased to 5 gigahertz, even just using PBO and automatic overclocking and just whacking up that upscaler to 200 megahertz. That saw a massive 700 megahertz increase in the all-core boost. And it was uh, a pretty good showing from the 7700 as well. So the uh, all-core frequency increased from 4.7 to 5 gigahertz with pre precision boost overdrive, automatic overclocking enabled. So that's definitely worth doing. Obviously, uh, I had a limited time for the launch today, so I wasn't able to go into a whole load of curve optimizer stuff. But even just with those basic options enabled, you basically claw back a lot of that frequency and you still see the benefit of the single um, the single threaded the, the all core not all core boost the peak boost of both of those processes you don't see a massive increase there but you do see a slight increase in power consumption though so definitely worth bearing in mind if you don't want to lose out on significant amounts of multi-threaded performance you're still saving power uh, but what we need to do now is take a look at the rest of the benchmarks First up, I should talk about the test system, which uses the latest version of Windows 11 as of January 2023, along with the latest drivers for all the hardware. I'm also using the latest BIOS of the ASUS ROG Strix X670E-E Gaming Wi-Fi Socket AM4 motherboard that I'm using, and also I'm using an NVIDIA RTX 3070, 32 gigabytes of G-Skill DDR5 6000 megahertz AMD Expo rated memory, along with a Be Quiet Pure Power 12 power supply. The first benchmark then is Cinebench in its multi-threaded version, and we are looking at the Ryzen 7 7700 first of all here, which is a couple of thousand points below the 7700X, uh, which is to be expected because that all-core frequency was just that bit lower. However, this was still faster than the Core i5-12600K, the Ryzen 7 5800X, and the Ryzen 5 7600X. So still a pretty fast processor, and of course it is a uh, noticeably cheaper than the Ryzen 7 7700X as well. Moving up the graph to the Ryzen 9 7900 and that lack of all-core boost due to the power constraints is very very evident here as the CPU was a good 4,000 points short of the Ryzen 9 7900X which allowed the Ryzen 9 5950X and the 12900K to leapfrog it whereas the 7900X managed to beat those processors convincingly. However, it's still just about faster than the Core i5-13600K, the Core i7-12700K and the Ryzen 9 5900X. So moving on to the single threaded score and we just have the slightly lower frequencies offered by the low power CPUs to deal with here which has inevitably resulted in some slightly slower scores. So the Ryzen 7 7700 for example around 100 points slower than its X version counterpart and that's pretty much the same for the Ryzen 9 7900 which is uh, just under 100 points short of the Ryzen 9 7900X. So still 
some reasonably fast CPUs here, but Intel is definitely a force to be reckoned with here, um, especially on a price to performance ratio. The Core i5-13600K um, outstripping both of the low power CPUs in this test. So moving on to handbrake then, and another multi-threaded test, which means that a drop-off in all-core boosting frequencies is going to result in a much lower benchmark score, and that was the same for both CPUs here. The Ryzen 7 7700, again being topped by the Ryzen 9 5900X and the Core i7 12700K, which were both beaten by the 7700X. Moving up the graph, the Ryzen 9 7900 falling short of, of around... 200,000 points compared to the Ryzen 9 7900X with the Core i9-12900K just able to pip it to the post there. However, the Ryzen 9 7900 still able to outstrip the Ryzen 9 5950X and the Core i5-13600K. Next up, we have the combined Photoshop and Lightroom test from the Procyon benchmark suite. And we have the Ryzen 7 7900 and the Ryzen 7 7700, both performing much better than Intel here. These suites just seem to love AMD Ryzen 7000 series CPUs. Uh, however, they were the slowest Ryzen 7 thousand series CPUs in the test with even the Ryzen 5 7600X beating them in this test. So lower power consumption, but lower performance as a result. Next up is the Adobe Premiere Pro benchmark from Puget Systems. And here we have the Ryzen 7 7700 closely matching the Ryzen 7 7700X. And the Ryzen 9 7900, uh, one notch up in the graph, was only slightly behind the Ryzen 9 7900X. So at least as far as Adobe Premiere Pro goes, you won't be seeing much of a performance drop off when it comes to opting for one of the non-X edition C, uh, CPUs that we're looking at today. The Ryzen 7 7700X, much faster than quite a few other benchmarks in the graph, roughly a mid-table result. It was faster than the Ryzen 9 5900X, the Core i5-3600K, and even the Ryzen 9 5950X, while offering a decent amount more performance than the Ryzen 5 7600X as well. Moving up the graph again, and the Ryzen 9 7900 pretty much just slightly faster than the Ryzen 7 7700. So uh, again, faster than all the CPUs that we just mentioned, but still a fair bit slower than the Ryzen 9 7900X. And even the Core i7 12700K managed a noticeably higher performance here. Far Cry 6 then, and the Ryzen 7 7700 and Ryzen 9 7900, keeping up pretty much with most of the other high-end CPUs in the graph. And uh, there's still reasonable scaling going on in this game, despite the fact that I'm only using a, an RCX 3070, which is probably akin to what most of you guys are using out there. So still scaling, you will still see benefits over Ryzen 5000 series CPUs, and quite significantly, if you go right the way up the graph to something like a Ryzen 9 7900, 950X uh, or Core i5-13600K, but pretty much the low power CPUs here keeping pace with the X edition versions such as the Ryzen 9 7900X and the Ryzen 7 7700X, but again the Core i5-13600K offering a better performance overall. Moving on to Watch Dogs then, and it's a game that sees relatively good scaling despite the fact we're only using an NVIDIA RTX 3070. A sizable difference between the slowest and the fastest CPUs in the graph. Fastest CPU is the Ryzen 7 7700X. That might seem strange, but it's, da it's down to lower latency inside the CPU. There are just fewer core complexes being used compared to other CPUs in the Ryzen 7000 series range, and that would also explain why the Ryzen 7 7700 is faster than the AMD Ryzen 9 7900. Uh, only by a few frames though, but again, the both low power CPUs not really sitting that much far, further behind their X series counterparts. Even the Ryzen 9 7900 is within spinning distance of the Ryzen 9 7900X. However, you would probably opt for the Core i5-3600K again here, just a fantastic CPU which manages a slightly higher minimum 99 percentile and noticeably faster average frame rate than both the new low power CPUs. 
Our final game test then, and Forza Horizon 5, probably one game that doesn't show huge amounts of scaling, especially at the top end of the stack. You'd need a much, much more powerful and more expensive graphics card to show much more scaling here. But even so, there's noticeable scaling going on, even with an RCX 3070, and here, the low power CPUs generally keeping up with their X edition counterparts. AMD doing pretty well in this test, but again, the Core i5 3600K being a thorn in its side with a slightly better 99th percentile and average frame rates here, which were noticeable even with this GPU. However, both low power CPUs were faster than the Ryzen 5 7600X and maybe critically the Ryzen 7 5800X3D for uh, the older Socket AM4 platform as well. So an interesting result there, uh, and you're not really losing anything by opting for the low power CPUs in Forza Horizon 5 at least. Moving on to the final benchmark then, and it is power consumption. And no surprises here, both low power CPUs drawing significantly less power than their uh, X series counterparts. So the biggest difference was for the Ryzen 9 7900X, which was around 125 watts lower for the system as a whole compared to the X series chip. So again, that is due to the lower all core boosting. The power constraints there um, clearly reducing performance in some areas, but AMD is very, very efficient even at lower power rating. So that's why it's able to keep pace even though it's using a huge amount less power, which is a great result if you're more concerned about power consumption and th thermals and efficiency. The Ryzen 7 7700, not quite as amazing, but still drawing a, signif a significant amount less, around 70 watts less than the 7700X. And as I mentioned earlier, both CPUs very, very easy to tame with an air cooler. Um, my custom liquid cooling was easily able to keep them around 60 degrees C under load, which is obviously a lot less than their X series counterparts, at least for uh, above eight cores. So what do we make of the Ryzen 9 7900 and the Ryzen 7 7700 then? Well, I think probably the most interesting point about these two new CPUs is the fact that they can be cooled with relatively modest air cooling. So 60 degrees with custom liquid cooling, that's a very, very low temperature for, you know, for example, a 7900, which is a 12 core, 24 thread CPU, um, which can boost over five gigahertz to be able to keep that at 60 degrees with custom liquid cooling is pretty is pretty useful but obviously you'll only be looking at maybe 10 15 degrees higher than that with a modest air cooler and that's much much cooler than what you would expect with the ryzen 9 7900 x for example so as well as saving you money over their x series counterparts they are saving saving you additional cash additional cash should i say um, because you don't need to offer quite as lavish cooling to deal with them. So in terms of specifications, it's great to see that everything is the same apart from lower frequencies. And that's where you need to be aware that these CPUs can be significantly slower than their X-series counterparts because they're, because they're having to rein in that all-core boost frequency significantly so in the 7900's case to meet those lower TDPs. You can increase that as we saw with pre precision boost overdrive and automatic overclocking, even just some very, very simple tweaking there. You don't even need to deal with curve optimizer to get that all core frequency for the uh, 7900 up from 4.3 all the way back up to five gigahertz. And that's very, very simple and easy to do. You can even play around with that temporarily in Ryzen Master in two seconds. So. That's something that's potentially gonna be useful for those of you out there that might are concerned with a drop in multi-threaded performance. Um, and it can have an impact in gaming as well. So that's something to be aware of with these CPUs. Um, in terms of pricing, obviously, we need to see where they land on shop shelves, but the Core i5-3600K definitely making itself known in the graphs where it was noticeably faster than both of these two CPUs in some tests. but you'll have to make that judgment for yourself based on the price that you have and whether you want to opt for Intel's platform. We are hearing rumors now that there may be another set of CPUs in future rather than just having um, a dead end, um, a, a dead upgrade path in terms of LGA 1700 with Intel. You might be able to actually upgrade that platform in the near future as well. So it's not looking quite as bad for upgrades as it once. <laughs>